they are correct. Fried foods are not a great thing for the most part because they are using bad oil. It's not about calories or the amount of fat. It's the quality of the oils. And virtually all fried foods you're going to find are using plant oils, vegetable oils. And in order for those oils to tolerate heat, because they're naturally very heat sensitive, they have to destroy those oils. They have to process them, oxidize them, bleach them, deodorize them, so that they're toxic and rancid. That's why you avoid fried food. If you wanted to have some fried food on occasion and you use a saturated fat like lard or coconut oil, then that would not be a problem. People think that if you eat saturated fat, you're going to store saturated fat in the body. But if we take a look at a cow, and we say that the cow, the meat in the cow is the source of the saturated fat, then we know that the cow has a bunch of saturated fat in its body, in its meat and tissues. But then the question is, if we are what we eat, then how does the saturated fat get into the cow? Because cows don't eat saturated fat. If the cow is allowed to eat what it wants to eat, then it's going to eat grass. And then somehow this grass turns into saturated fat, and that's called a biotransformation. So if that happens in the cow, then why would it happen very differently in a human? Meaning, not that we eat grass, but that the saturated fat in our bodies don't necessarily come from saturated fat. So in humans, it's also about biotransformations, but in humans, the source of it is not grass. It is excess fuel. When we eat more than we need, then that excess fuel is going to be turned into fat for storage. And when that excess fuel is accompanied by excess insulin, because insulin, like we've said, is a storage hormone. And then in humans, that is how we end up with our saturated fat. People talk about how the studies say that if the liver is full of fat, full of saturated fat, then that liver is insulin resistant, which is true, but it's not the saturated fat that caused the insulin resistance. It's the other way around. It's the excess fuel and the insulin that creates the saturated fat. And now when the liver is congested, it becomes insulin resistant. When we give the liver more to do than it can handle, then it's going to get congested. And the things congesting the liver are all the substances that only the liver can process. And the first thing that everyone knows about is alcohol. But very few people know about fructose. They've heard kind of about sugar. They know sugar is a bad thing. But the real reason sugar is so bad, that white sugar is so bad, is that 50% of sugar is fructose. The third thing only the liver can do is to process toxins and clean those out. And if the liver is already busy with alcohol and fructose, now it's kind of backed up and it's not going to be able to process those toxins very effectively and therefore those toxins build up as well. And the fourth factor we need to understand is insulin. When the liver is already fatty and we have a lifestyle that maintains a high insulin level. Now, insulin aggravates it, it makes it worse. Insulin is a storage hormone, so it's going to prevent the fat burning in that liver, and it's going to perpetuate the insulin resistance in that liver. So we can't clean out a fat liver if we still have high insulin levels. annotated, and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.